results are different. Our results are different. I'm so in love with this, 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 this what God gave you this year. Yielding to where faith leads us. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 in the TPT. Uh, Apostle, and turn me on to the TPT. Ooh. Our results are different. I'm going to read that. And I know I'm sure you've read it all week long, but I'm going to read it. Here it says, we look, I want to go verse 1, verse 1 first. Verse 1 first. We can't do verse 2 without verse 1. As for us, somebody say us. We have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us at the sin we so easily fall into. Then, watch that contingency. That's a conditional word. Uh, then we will, we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination. For the path has already been marked out for, before us. Verse 2. We look away from the natural realm. Oh God. And we fasten our, our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us. Somebody say it's in me. Who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart. Oh God. Was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be here as he focused on the harvest, not the sacrifice. He endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God, yielding to where faith leads us. Say this with me. Our results are different. Writer of Hebrews was constructing this. He was writing this to Jews actually who were functioning at a time where there were circumstantial issues and persecution was at an all time high. Hebrews chapter number 11 and 12 was written to people that were discouraged and despondent because they were tired of going through trials and tribulations and the writer of Hebrews was trying to tell these Jewish boys that listen you cannot go back because they wanted to go back to the struggle of the law let's just get out of it go back to the law and get out of grace because we are preaching something called grace and expecting manifestation we are troubled on every side we are are persecuted and really Hebrews 11 and 12 is not for the faint but it's trying to toughen people who are afraid to be courageous to walk in the faith that we have been given oh y'all y'all don't understand this we got to set something up tonight and so he preached at a time that's likened to ours where there was evil rulership that was democracy that came and it was a, a melting melting pot of things being influxed in and so there was persecution where they begin to talk faith and miracles where they begin to talk how there's one way to the father and that was Jesus Christ and so he preached to depress leadership he preached to a nation that didn't see the tangible anointing of the power of God. So Hebrews 11 is about a regular people having a supernatural power that would command exploits. He was talking about a spirit filled church. See, I got quiet, apostle. It got quiet because, of, and I've been on this in my church, because the church, I'm not talking about this room right now. I'm talking about the church. It's not spirit-filled. Because a spirit-filled church has undeniable proofs. A spirit-filled church shows a different result than everybody else. And so the writer of Hebrews wrote the book of the, the chapter 11. He gave us the hall of fame, but he comes in chapter the 12 and say since we are compassed about with so the greater cloud of witnesses now some teach I don't believe this in the text that there's a cloud of witnesses that are watching us here on earth no I believe in the text it meant we already saw God do this before Oh, y'all didn't get this. Huh? It's not talking about Gideon and them watching you. It's not talking about Moses watching you. It's not saying that God said, I already used some people before. Do you not think I can do it again? 
And so he says here in the text, he says, you have a great cloud of witnesses. But watch this before I get into something real deep in a minute. Watch this. He said, now, but uh, he said, you got to lay aside every weight and the sin that besets you because it likens our pathway to a race. Now, 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 listen, your, your apostle came that God inspired him to say yielding to where faith leads us. And I begin to pray and seek God before I came. And I'm sure many preachers dissected the word yield. I hope they use uh, the dichotomy of both definitions. Uh, it is sacrifice and produce. Some of y'all are sacrificing, but there's no productivity. Some of y'all are trying to produce, but there's no sacrifice. But there's a dichotomy in the meaning, in the in the denotation and the connotation of this word. This means that I'm either go through something to bring something out. So there's sacrifice and productivity. Now it says yielding to where faith leads us. I really got to deal with this tonight because the Lord has been speaking to me because I begin to ask him why are we not seeing miracles as commonplace in our churches why over here in America are we in a place now where we see it over in Africa or if there's a miracle people are so surprised and so overwhelmed that people don't connect it to God they connect it to some personality as if God is not capable of performing miracles unless you have somebody up here that's very popular and they don't understand I said Lord why is this happening he said because uh, these people are in darkness uh, there is no real authentic revelation uh, there is no spirit filled church uh, now see people gonna get mad at me because they connote spirit filled meaning I run around here and pray in tongues uh, and I do it spirit filled means uh, it's our colloquialisms uh, it's our semantics it's our, our behavior uh, in a Pentecostal house uh, you think that means spirit spirit field uh, oh it means all of that uh, but spirit field means uh, I produce the results uh, of my father uh, it means this that the sick uh, cannot remain sick uh, it means that the poor cannot remain poor because when I'm spirit field uh, I manifest undeniable proofs y'all gonna make me preach hard tonight but I'm gonna preach real hard and so he said this he said the church and I said, Lord, how is the church not spirit filled? He said, because the church has not shone light to this arena of darkness. He said, the church has gotten satisfied. And can I talk to our, our cultural, our ethnic brothers and sisters tonight? The black church. Can you do y'all mind for a minute? The, let me say, let me, let me talk to people who were born inside of oppressed parents and in spirits of oppression. We have learned how to be loyal to our dysfunction, to the place that we are more familiar with pain uh, we are more familiar with fear and uh, we are more comfortable with struggle than to bring light into this place and break generational curses because it's not supposed to be like this mm -hmm. I'm going to get here don't worry and so the Lord told me to speak several things to you before we begin to flow prophetically and I want to say this to you because God said this he said first of all he says yielding to where faith leads he said ask the question bishop where are the sons of God we are the sons of God. Let me explain what I mean by this. How many of you have, have had dogs before? Dogs before. And if you've ever breeded a dog, a dog gives birth to what? Puppies. And a cat gives birth to kittens. Now how many of you are parents in here and you have children? You gave birth to another human. Well, what does God reproduce when he gives birth? He, gives, he, he produces a God. Oh, I need it. And you see how I said that? And the spirit that resisted us in the slavery of our fathers refuses to accept that even though I was born on the bottom in this world, in the spirit realm, I've been seated on the top. God gave birth to another God, which means I have God's divine authority in this realm. Oh, as he is, so are we in this world. And so you say yield to where the spirit, where faith leads us. Let's talk about faith for a minute. 
the Bible declares that faith comes apostle by hearing and hearing by the word of God and so people define faith now faith is a substance you can say it uh, of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen uh, but we have not really looked at the understanding of faith uh, even though it's dealt to every man faith now is uh, it is what I understand about the truth uh, and it is proven in my response uh, it means I take responsibility to commit God's integrity to move in a place in me uh, and move in a place in my situation that's never been done before and so if faith comes by hearing you got to understand uh, when you break down the word hearing it doesn't mean that you sit in church and hear messages it doesn't mean that you read your bible and say you have faith no hearing in this text means uh, that it is your understanding uh, that you stand on uh, that the undeniable proofs uh, can proceed out of your life uh, and many people know the scripture but they don't have faith Okay. Let me explain to you what I mean by that because people looking at me kind of skeptic. But they, they, they know the scripture they can they can commit but they have not committed God's integrity to it. See, we got to stand in this church and refuse for that boy to die. And should the devil allow the death angel to come, we got to raise him up. You see, you see how many people are sitting down because they don't know who they are. Because if God ever really gets in you, it's not about your thrusts, it's not about your amen, it's about your responsibility. I've committed God's integrity to operate and operate like Jesus did. So I speak to sickness and it must bow. If I'm a son of God, if I am a son of God. So the first thing he said to me, to say to them, where are the sons of God, the world, the earth groans for the sons of God, where the sons of God. Well, what I read about the sons of God is they that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. So how many of us are being led by the spirit of God? Oh, Lord Jesus. Here's what the Lord told me in the midst of a society where there is kidnapping and violence and murder, when there is dysfunction in the midst of society, where there are churches on every corner, two churches here and two churches there, where there are pastors and Facebook, social media, prophets, and there are fivefold ministers everywhere. Yet we see the trajectory of our country that is still bowing to evidence of things that are being legalized that were never authorized by God when the presence of God is in a place it shows God's divine authority watch this so where are the sons of God where are those that are spirit led spirit filled that listen let me show you where they are they are not the ones that have bravado in their voices they are not the ones in the priestly garments and the chains they are the ones that you see undeniable proofs because whenever you see the Holy Ghost in the Bible you see a sign a miracle a wonder so where are the sons of God how can we be led by a faith we do not believe in oh oh I'm gonna give you a few things and it's gonna be all right tonight how can we be directed watch this faith is a response to our understanding of the truth I want you to I want you to circle this in that note I gave you it is a response it is not a memorization. It is not a statement of scripture. It requires a movement. Let me give it to you. Man with the withered hand stretch out. He had to commit the integrity of Jesus to heal him by having a responsibility to act on what he understood. You're not being destroyed by the economy. You're not being destroyed by the president. You, he doesn't have the power to destroy believers. What has the power to destroy believers is a lack of knowledge. That means that they are living in darkness. Watch this. Uh, trying to shine light where there's no brilliance in them. Uh, that the bulbs are dim because if they were not dim, you've been in church for 30 years. Uh, why is everybody in your family dying of cancer? You are a believer, a son of God. The devil should be afraid of you. 
in the text in Hebrews, uh, he was addressing cowards trying to activate courage. He was saying, you want this thing easy, but deliverance comes, watch this, after endurance. Oh, Jesus. And so many people have walked away from the plow because nobody wants to go through anything. The Bible even declares in order to reign, there will be a season of suffering. If any man will live godly, he shall suffer. Many people put their hands down and they're so afraid. Hebrews was saying, I need you to be not be afraid to be persecuted, to stand out and speak to that body. And don't worry about being embarrassed if the boy die, he got to raise up again. But God needs some courageous people that will stand and stop this in your family and stop this with your kids and stop this in your matter. You are a spirit filled believer. You are a God in this realm. Where are the sons of God? He said, come in here and preach it because people are confused about the power of the Holy Ghost. You reduce the power of the Holy Ghost to your ability and say, I'm so tired of us laying hands on people and they get up with the same problems. What they did was they fell under, watch this, they fell under the seduction of church that when you lay hands on me, it's so power that I fall with no expectation. You should never come to have hands laid upon you with no expectation because he meets you at your very place of expectation. And so you are expecting human hands to take you somewhere in the spirit realm. You cannot see my hands as human. You must see them as healers. So when I lay hands on the sick, it wasn't my hands. It was healing. Here's what the Lord said. He said, tonight is a location of the sons of God. It's an emergence of the sons of God. Tonight, pastors are going to come from their places of being discouraged by being molested by problems and stand courageous and understand that as God been before you, Joshua, be courageous now because you're going to go through some stuff. I'm so sick of people that you took everything in the world and one little blow wrong at you in the church and you're ready to quit and give up. That's not a son of God. A son of God will stand in the midst of tough times uh, that must be a tenacity about your next level okay let me give you this I feel some mountain in this room and the reason why I said we gotta wait before we call cause I gotta raise the level of your faith I got to raise the level of your faith because you need to understand. You got to get mad. Some of y'all already done buried that boy because you're going by the diagnosis of the doctor. Sons of God, huh? look at diagnosis. Watch this as distractions. Why would the community in Acts, the book of Acts change and everybody be blessed? Because faith was being preached and people committed to the responsibility. Faith is not an entertaining word. Faith is not a word that you wear on your back. Faith is a commitment to be responsible for what you understand. Amen. My brother had been diagnosed with lymphoma cancer. You may have heard me share this testimony. And the doctor came out and said, you know what? We have done what we can do for him here. My mother stood up with tears coming down her face and she said, I will not bury my children. God is looking for somebody that will be dead to the things of the world and alive to the spirit. See, what happened was my mother was more dead than she was alive. You didn't get that. Huh? Listen, huh? oh, Jesus, huh? that if you huh, are dead in Christ, huh, you are risen with him huh? and you are not yourself, huh? but you are a spirit being. Huh? They are sons of God huh? in their own body. You keep acting like Clark Clint when God made you Superman. I came to find your Superman. And you 
think it's just going to be under apostle. There's such an anointing dripping in this house that you ain't got to go to three years of college and five years of seminary. You ain't got to have a mega church, but you got to have something in your spirit that you recognize who you are. I'm so tired of God's children not looking like God. Do you know who you are? I am a child of God. I stand in the authority of the power of attorney. So whatever I bind on earth, is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loose in heaven. Let me tell you why that don't work. Because you're not controlling what God allows. You're releasing what he's allowed. So what he's saying is what's not allowed in heaven is not allowed on earth. What's loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. Some of y'all binding stuff that he never bound. Some of y'all loosing stuff that he never loose. And that's why it doesn't work. Because watch this. You're operating in a natural realm. My responsibility tonight is to get you into the spirit realm. Because let me tell you, many of you are not functioning off revelation. You're functioning off of YouTube and methodology. Many of you are copycats of what you've seen manifest in others. And so what you're doing is you're drawing from vessels that you feel that have it because you have not a reality of a real relationship that's authentic with God for yourself. And so you are operating in somebody else's revelation and you don't have the grace for that vision. And so when there's no grace, there is self-sufficiency. So you're relying on your strength and your own might and you're confused and you are compromised. Because you haven't yet functioned in the spirit. But tonight we're going to function in the spirit. Let me give you this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 verses 10 through 14. In the New Living Translation of the Bible. I need you to hear this. Everybody look at this. But it was God. It was to us. It was who? It was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. The reason why I said we struggle with revelation, because we are not getting it by the spirit. Our intelligence and our logic and our reasoning, reasoning has begun to embrace and try to function as spiritual beings with our own intelligence. So we've allowed reasoning and education to craft how we're going to obey by faith. When faith doesn't make any sense because it's not revealed to your intelligence. It won't look smart. It won't feel smart. But you will know it's God. It says, For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. How many secrets do you know? Faith is a mystery that is based upon spiritual revelation. Not academic intelligence. And now the worldview tries to reason. And let me explain what I'm saying. Many of you function by statistics. You function by data. You make decisions based upon the circumstance. Based upon the budget. Based upon the finances. And so God's voice is filtered through what your possibilities are. Not his. So God is not moving in your churches, not breathing upon your vision because he can only function through the dimension of faith and that comes by way of the spirit. Next verse. It says, no one, everybody see that, can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. You cannot Walk around here empty of the spirit of God and get revelation from God. Next verse. And we have received, watch this, God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know, we can what? Know the wonderful things God has freely given us while you begging for what you already have. While you renting what you already possess. You are the covenant seed of Abraham. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And your settling has sabotaged your insight. Because a spirit man with no insight has no manifestation. Because he cannot embrace it. Watch this next verse. 
When, I, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. People are functioning off of human wisdom. That's why you have a whole lot of people, and don't get mad at me when I say this. I believe in, in going to spiritual counselors, but you have a whole lot of people carrying out the steps and the 12 steps of mental health to manage issues that should be delivered. So we have gotten into spiritual maintenance. We are managing our illness by taking our pills. We are managing our blood pressure by obeying doctors. Because the logic says, uh, based upon your doctor's knowledge, you have more investment in the trust of his knowledge than the power of his word. Because there's no light of revelation to understand that healing is the children's bread. But you haven't eaten any of it. Next verse is where we need to be. But people who aren't spiritual can't, y'all better see this, receive these truths. What happened on that? So the dad just opened his eyes. See, we sit in the atmosphere of the usual miracles. You need to understand, we don't want to just be satisfied with eyes open. Organs got to lock back in place. Damage has to go in reversal. Can you get them on the phone? When we get them on the phone, these are in the structures of God. We are to shout live. Now listen, live, I'm not just saying be alive. I'm talking about live organs, live bones, lock back in place. The phone is going to the voicemail. That's all right. Whenever that they connect back, I tell you what, hold your dead phone up. Hold your phone up. And even if you dial it, dial it to the voicemail. The spirit connection is not broken. Let us know when you get it on there. Now shout live. Shout in this room. Again. There you go. What's his name? Ron. Shout live Ron. That's it. Somebody give him a praise. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this because here's what you've been missing. But people, listen to this, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. Keep it right there. Here's where we have missed it by being so carnal. You too smart, he can't get it to you. You too logical, you too analytical. He says, I take the foolish things of this world and confound the wise. You too smart for your own good. So it's coming from your intelligence because you have not received his truths. I'm trying to give somebody something in this room. I'm trying to show you what's wrong with it going on in your church. You're preaching to the depressed people. Watch this. Who are carnal. See, I used to think carnality. I used to, I used to think. I, I'm out of peace. I used to think carnality. Watch this. Y'all know when I take these off, it's trouble. I used to come out. I should think carnality was lipsticks and, 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 and you can hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Was lipstick and a certain way you dress and all that. I should think that was carnality. No, no, no. That's thinking outside of the mind of God. That's people who don't have the mind of Christ. That is PhDs and doctors and people on the street with street knowledge and street degrees that don't have the mysteries of God. So they can embrace them and so they are dressed up. And they have everything it takes, but they don't have no power. They can't get nothing off the ground. 
because you rather listen to a preacher and I'm not coming against preachers you're more devout to the people that you follow than following God you're more devout to the people that you follow than following God when they say it you feel like it is God when they do it, you feel like because it's working for them. But watch this. God never created me to have to live, look, look through a, a petition to receive from him. Jesus tore the veil. So I could get direct access. And if your only access is, is on my Facebook Live, when I'm not live, you still dead. But if you ever get the reality of the truth of God, you don't need Facebook you don't need a walk book. You don't need a black book. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. Watch what it says. He says, but people who are spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. And they suck of this word. Can't understand it. That's why I don't understand these pastors that take people in their church and take members in and not concerned they feel they feel with the Holy Ghost. Because they come to church real good and making you look good in the numbers, you don't care they ain't got no power. And so the church don't move because ain't nobody got no gas. I've never seen so many people so many people that don't gas up. You know what frustrates me? I don't understand this. How people live on E in their cars. How you drive by the gas station. And the light is on. Telling you you on E. Even telling you you got 10 miles to go. And then you speak in tongues uh, the next time you get in your car asking God to help you get to the gas station. And this is how we push in vision. We're trying to carry people to the distance you saw in your dreams on E. These people won't come to prayer but we sanction them to be deacons. These people won't fast with us and we want to acknowledge their prophetic gifts. These people have no, they have no gas to carry it anywhere. Now here's what happens to us. So we do this. Will the car still move with no gas? Yes, it will. You put it in neutral and you push it. And so what y'all doing with y'all visions with these people on E? Y'all trying to let them push. And a car being pushed takes a whole lot more people than a car full of gas. So you started a long time ago pushing. I started three years ago with power and I know where the gas station is. It's in prayer. It's in fasting. It's in accountability. It's on the altar. You take them through new members and don't require them to be filled with the spirit. So you put another monkey on your back. And you have these people in strategic, uh, influential locations uh, and positions in your church because they're intelligent, but they ain't got no power. And so when God is telling you that we need to launch out and do this and launch out and do that, they shut your influence down. So the people's intelligence become in control of the vision. Because they're not yielding to where faith leads. They're yielding to where fear keeps. Fear keeps. And we are more loyal to fear. Than we are to faith. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me in this room. You know why? Because we mask fear with pride. And so God says this, I'm not there because God resists the proud. You better look that word up. 
and I give more grace to somebody that's humble enough to say, God, I can't, because the proud, proud are self-sufficient. I'm not self-sufficient. I can't do it on my own. I'm grace supplied. Whatever you are self-sufficient, you are grace denied. But whenever you are relying on God, you are grace supplied. You, you too proud to say you need some help. You too proud. You think you done got big now that you ain't got to get in your prayer closet. But, what, but my, my, my big mom them said this. Whatever it took you to get there, it's going to take that and more to keep you there. You ain't prayed in a long time. You ain't felt the power in a long time. You function off shaking limbs, but you ain't got no power. And that's why you don't have revivals in your churches. I ain't come to beat y'all. But I came for y'all to find the truth because I'm tired of us preaching out of frustration. I'm tired of you being molested by your own issues. He said in Hebrews, you got to lay this stuff aside. You got to stop being loyal to what's dysfunction, doing the same thing, expecting different results. What about you is different from last year? What revelation are you riding on? Because revelation is the gas tank. What revelation are you riding on? What the Lord, you know, let, me, let me use myself because I don't want everybody to get mad. I'm going to use myself. I, listen, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I pitied every groan. And I got in frustration. I was like, it was the people. They, they, they don't want to move on this. They don't want to go on that. And God rebuked me in my prayer room. He said, first of all, get in prayer and pray to a different level and give a different sacrifice. Got in prayer. God began to shift me, shift me, shift me. The elevation happened in my life now. It's not doors that are open. It's prayers that's been prayed. It watches. It's sweat that's been. Oh, oh Jesus! Um, it's a brokenness. You got to be broken to be better. Cause the Bible says this. If you keep reading this text, that whom the Lord loves, He chastises. And so God said, No, it's time for you to get a bead. And see, please, you got to watch this. Don't get mad at me, brothers. I love y'all. Respect you, but you don't want to be. And you see a rise of women that are coming up and getting into strategic places are becoming influential because women, excuse me, I don't mean no harm, have become tougher than men in this area. They have a tenacity because they've been through so much stuff. They realize how to process pain and still get the power. You get a man, if you break his pride and you disrespect him, he shut down. You got to have enough power to throw this stuff off that your ego don't lead you. But God, watch this, God masters it. That's your humanity. Hear me. Because, listen to me very carefully so you can hear me. Because the black man was born in disrespect and dishonor. So there is something in us that, that and women, you got to watch this. Don't you ever crush your man. Let me, let me, you know what, this ain't no... Don't you ever disrespect him and compare him to somebody else and make him feel that he can never attain or bring, bring, bring blessing in your life because what you do is you drain him, you give him an oil leak when you do that. You reduce him to a man, then you, you call him a boy and then you want him to be a man and be a priest over you. Don't you ever make your man emasculate him and make him a boy. He'll forever be one. You destroy his gate of spirituality when you disrespect the honor that should be placed on him, especially if you are married to a black man. A black man was born in crushed oppression. And it's more difficult to be a black man than it is to be any woman in this room. You know what? I, I'll say that. But all the brothers should have said, you know what you write unless you're scared. Has she, has, has she made you... And so we're waiting on the men to stand up. But they cannot stand up because your tongue has pushed them down. I have never seen so much potential that is wasted. Because we're functioning off the logic of life. Instead of spiritual intelligence, I, I'm, I'm a, I, we, we, don't, we have no, he says, but, but people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. 
How many spiritual people in your church? Let me tell you what spiritual means. Spiritual means this, and I'm getting ready to close. In Genesis 26, it talks about Isaac being in a famine. It says that there was a famine hit the land, and Isaac was hanging around the, the, the Philistines, and God speaks to him and says to him, don't go to Egypt. What he's saying is, don't go back to the system that created a hustle that you don't need me. He was saying, don't go back into self-sufficiency. Don't go back and do the things you know you can do to get, make it happen. Because God is showing famine is an opportunity for me to magnify myself. But some of y'all are so afraid to be with nothing. Because sometimes nothing is what gets me something. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Because you have no hope. You have no evidence. So he says, Isaac, don't go. This is Genesis 26. Don't go. Stay right here. Watch this. Hear the word. A while. Which means for a season, I'm going to have you endure the famine, but I'm going to bless you in the same spot that other people messed up, other people missed it, other people didn't have. I'm going to magnify myself in a great place because you stayed and obeyed me and that made no logical sense. According to statistics, Isaac should have left and gone to Egypt. According to the analysis of the economy, everything was breaking down. You need to understand in a family, in a famine, the value of things go up. In a famine, the economy flips over. And so watch this. What becomes easy becomes taxing. There's no promotion. There's no elevation. There are no raises. The banks are empty. There's no funding. There's no nothing. But God seizes this moment as his opportunity. And so some of you walked away from what you thought was dry. But it was the opportunity. You thought it was going to be fruitful over here. So you moved. So God says to Isaac, who can understand the spirit, stay right here. But stay right here for a while. I want you to endure this for a moment because deliverance comes at the cusp, at the process of endurance. You got to go through something. Amen. Have you ever seen so many preachers that can't go through nothing? I asked God, why did you call Abraham your friend? Why was Abraham the friend of God? Because through every season, Abraham was stable in his relationship with God. I ain't never seen so many people pouting with God, but still sitting up in church and enjoying his air and enjoying his lungs and enjoying his wind. But you've been long pouting with God. How you know? Because you don't even come. Adam, where are you? You somewhere getting you some wine and getting you some liquor to calm your nerves. You somewhere looking at pornography. You somewhere in a place of lust. You don't picked up your Egypt issues because that's a coping mechanism because you're trying to escape a call. But Abraham stayed stable. Abraham stayed stable even when he messed up with Hagar. Abraham stayed stable even when Sarah wasn't a partner with his vision. Abraham stayed stable and God is looking for mature Christians. Oh Lord Jesus. The sons of God are not babies. They are spiritually mature. And I want to tell you the, the dangerous thing to every church is to raise your church of toddlers and adolescents. People who are not spiritually mature. How you know they're spiritually mature? They take on a new level of responsibility. Why do you have so many lay members and nobody serving? Why do you have the same people picking up paper, the same people cooking, the same people doing this? Why don't you have spiritual maturity why do you keep chasing people with tissue paper feelings they need the power of the holy ghost or you still gonna be psychotic doing the same thing get the same results we don't even require i'm picking at y'all our musicians to have the power of the holy ghost so they don't hear from heaven they hear from a band so watch this so we turn our churches into nightclubs we turn our churches into something that entertains people and they go out and feel comfortable in their sins there should be something about the power that's in this room that says i gotta stop doing what i'm doing i need power that's where faith leads me I'm almost finished. That's where faith leads me. Faith can't lead me to something that's non-spiritual. Faith is my understanding. 
Watch this. That provokes my response. God said to me, you ain't done nothing, so why should I do something? Amen. Amen. There's nothing that you're doing that requires my involvement. You didn't believe God for the money. You went and took out all these loans. And people taking out these loans saying, Woo, look at God. When he said, I'm the lender, not the borrower. I'm the head and not the tail. Because my supply doesn't come from me. It's deposited in me. So listen, I said, okay, Lord, I, all right. I'll stop looking at the numbers. I'll stop looking at the figures. I said, you said change this house. Let me tell you something. I, I, one Sunday after church, I told him, I said, God says, our stage ain't to look like this anymore. Everybody in my church, we start tearing the stage down. Tearing the stage down. Because I was loyal to a system that was safe. Safety will control your faith. I was loyal to it. I was loyal to they said, you need security. There's some false sense of security that I have you outside of the will of God, that God never gets involved, and you suffering and crying, but God can't move until you move. Amen. 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 I stood up with the, with, the, with the stage ripped up. My daughters can tell you. The stage ripped up, the floors ripped up, changing the stage and all that. And I said to the people, I need, watch this, I need over $50,000 to renovate God's house. Amen. I stood with courage. And I said, I'll give whatever I have. And I said, I pledge $5,000. Now let me tell you something. Whenever you step out in a place of faith, you step in a gate and a window that cannot be denied. Amen. God cannot ignore you getting in his face. Oh, Lord. These people are here to it. Lord Jesus. I stood there. Let me tell you. This is how I know it was God. They, uh, we have stood in our church and done super seeds before. But when I told them that God showed me in a vision. See, let me tell you something. That what we are supposed to be. And I stood and participated first. People came from everywhere. Listen, in one Sunday, over $50,000. You don't hear what I'm saying. Came in to change our stage. And then the people continue to give. And continue to give. And continue to give. And somebody's thinking, well, you know what? God must be on them. No, no, no. I got on God. God been on me. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. I stopped trying to figure this out in my logical mind. And I got spiritual. Isn't it amazing how you can be spiritual for everybody but you? And the Lord began to show me, watch this, I'm going to get in trouble in this room. The Lord began to show me it's a spirit of pride that had creeped up on my life that said, you too popular to be embarrassed. You too popular to not be successful. So it's better for you to stay safe in a pond you can swim in than jump into an ocean that I can give you something more in. And so you're safe hanging around the edge in shallow streams and shallow waters. I watch this and so you're safe going to all these different places. The minute I jumped into that ocean, doors open from everywhere. I've been on the Word Network twice. There are opportunities for me to go to Pakistan and all different places. And I realized I wasn't waiting on God. He was waiting on my spirit. And this room tonight, you've lived at a limit because you keep jumping in and out of the spirit. You think spirit is this building. And so we don't have, and I'm preaching this in my church until Jesus tarry. Listen, we don't have spirit filled churches. And so you've strapped all your dry members on your back. And they are wearing you out because now you are controlled by the systems of their increase in their finances and their decisions and their attendance and tenders instead of the passion of God. So the sons of God are those that are led by the spirit of God. Go to Romans. I'm going to give my last scripture and then I'm going to prophesy and we're going to get out here. Can I give y'all one more scripture? It's Friday night. It's Friday night. I need to give you this scripture because you need to hear this. Romans chapter 8 verse number 14 from the TPT. He took me on this. I love this journey. Watch this. The mature children of God 
are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Stay right there. Hear the sons of God. It's those that are spiritually mature. Why do we continue to feed these babies applesauce? We had a, let's say we had a daycare one time in, in our church in Waycross. We had a daycare. We had kids in the daycare. And um, I came through that one day and the, the babies was eating. It was the little, the little, little babies, you know, that would eat with you. You feed them, right? And there was a, a boy that was, he no baby to me, four years old. He was sitting at that table. And I'm wondering, why is he sitting at this table with a baby food? And the other babies just eating and he over here just hollering. Just hollering. I said, and why is he hollering? They said, he's waiting on somebody to feed him. He won't eat the real food that we serve him so his teeth haven't developed the biting mechanism. All he know how to do is suck his food. Oh, Lord Jesus. And so his development is limited because he hasn't been taught how to eat. Y'all been making mush. A stuff to make people feel all right. And so we were out here preaching dripping in favor. We were out here preaching sweatless victories. And they ain't there yet. They have a level, they developed the level of maturity to be able to be driving the vehicles in the spirit that we're trying to let them drive. They don't want to hear me in the Holy Ghost tonight. Because we've abandoned what is necessary in every life. And that's time, seed, time, harvest. Because time requires the fruit of patience to be produced in my life. So I'll be stable. And so what happens? They raise up and they leave. Because they're not mature children of God. Who are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. How can people be fighting in church about a man and fighting in church about a seed? These are not mature children. That we've given responsible positions to. Now y'all know I came to close the conference. And I can't let you close out of here knowing that thinking that you're following faith if you don't have understanding. Because this understanding should develop you to maturity. Lastly, 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 here's the last points. The points I'm going to give you. The first thing he said to say to the pastors and say to everybody in this room. What will require your next level? It will require a deeper level of spirituality. That's number one. You have to be more spirit than you are anything else. Which is going to make you strange. Amen. You got to do things that people say it wouldn't work. You know what God said to Isaac? He said, I'm going to bless you right in that land, apostle. He says, and I'm going to give you all the possessions. And the Bible says God created space for Isaac in a famine because it was his opportunity to show how powerful he was that the outside environment can't control the inside blessings. What's inside of us should control the outside. Everybody's church may be going into foreclosure, but not this one. As a matter of fact, we're going to buy some of the ones that's going into foreclosure. It's time for us to take territories. But if you're around here scared because they lost theirs, I don't want to lose mine. You got to be willing to be embarrassed. The Bible says Jesus suffered the humiliation of the cross because saving himself would have caused him not to save us. So to save us, he had to lose himself. How much of you can you lose to gain? Because there must be a divine exchange. You got to give something. So spirituality, somebody say spirituality. There must be a deeper level of spirituality. Then there must be this. Spirituality comes first. Listen to me. Develop them spiritually. Train them spiritually. Then there must be capacity. Capacity building, watch this. It's, watch this. It centers around skill development. The lack of skill can kill dreams. Capacity enables your people to deliver. Require capacity. How you can be here and you don't want to train and rehearse. How do we 
miss training modules that are set up that are not convenient. And see, let me tell you something. You want to find your church, find people that can be inconvenienced. I have been in church Sunday. Okay, then Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Late last night with Prophets Bynum and Revival. If you ever been in Revival with Prophets Bynum, we don't get out early. Matter of fact, we laid before God last night. To get a flight here to come here today, watch this. And I ministered to my son in the spirit before I came into this service. I ministered to my son in the spirit to put him on course and all of that. Why? Because God has increased my capacity to operate in a grace that ain't regular. Anybody that makes you feel comfortable is a bad friend to you. Because what they just did is put a limit on your potential to go higher. Because they celebrated a moment and you got stuck right there thinking you have arrived. You are running a marathon. Stop making them feel like they're in a sprint like you did it. You cannot build a strong vision on the backs of weak, empty people. They need capacity. They need training. They need development. They have the look, but they don't have the skill set. And they'll be right here talking about, I know how to urge you. You don't know how to urge you. Why do we require less training for promotion in the church? Will they take you through rounds of training in the secular world? Why don't we vet people before we bring them in here and they screw in everybody? Because we didn't vet them. We didn't hold them accountable. We didn't check character. Oh, Lord Jesus. We just thought they real talented. They'll be a blessing to your ministry. Amen. Stop marketing molesters. It should be a reputation in your ministry. You got to have some power there. You got to be developed, and you can't be afraid to develop people. Amen. If you get out of the seduction of numbers, because if you read my Bible, my Bible tells me the widow of Zarephath sustained the prophet. Yes, One partner yes. took care of him mm. until he went to Carmel. Right. God told me, you ain't got to look for numbers, look for me. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. Then there must be a positivity mentality. Stop allowing people to speak negative in faith atmospheres. Amen. Amen. I do not allow my children to release negative confessions and declarations in my atmosphere. They have too much influence to my heart. Your associations must be congruent they must align with your purpose and your next level or you have to lay them aside yes. Yes. you're gonna get mad at me you're gonna get mad at me i'm saying this wild but i don't mean it wild i don't care if it is your mama love her but she can't affect the direction my family is going i love my mama I love her. If she watching this video, she know I love her. But if my mama get ready to utter something out that's against the prayer margin for my life, I said, mama, don't. Because I can't let anything contaminate the grace and the faith that I'm operating in. I'm in a different, I'm going from faith to faith. You know what God told me? Tonight, he's breaking people that's been stuck on these steps. You've been on this faith step a long time right here. But you ain't never going to the next level because the next level going to require a climb. So you pretty right here, but right here requires another level. And you want to go to the next level, but you want somebody to hand it to you. I have to go from faith to faith. That's why I had to say, that baby can't die. Amen. If you have to go and lay your body on him, if you have to go and take that handkerchief and lay it on him, what's not, it's time, it cannot die. I take communion every day. Because you know what he said? When I observe this covenant in Ephesians 2, 6, that I'm seated above disease and affliction, therefore I cannot be sick. Amen, amen, amen. Look at y'all how y'all looking. 
I know y'all, see, you all are in, in, in humanity, and you're saying, well, the body ages. Well, read your Bible. At 80, Joshua was going for his mountain. I'm going to decide to die. I'm going to call my children. Should Jesus tarry and say, Mama, going blah, blah, blah. Because what he said was, I have that authority. Oh, oh God. If you ever get in your right identity, I'm telling you something right now. You will stop caring. You will start accomplishing. I say, y'all will have a baby. Jesus. Oh. I'm so mad at the devil, but I'm so rejoicing in God that God will select y'all to prove his glory because it didn't break your stride. See, God is looking for somebody with the seed of Abraham. So you need to understand this. Who understood what you understood. How you had to wait a long time for the promise. But when there is a promise over your life, it would deny I I have read and I have seen from my mentors where women who had no uterus gave birth to babies. But we are too afraid to say and allow the doctor to sanction what God did not sanction. If you want children, you decree it out of your spirit. I saw my, I saw my brothers, my brother crying. Until he said, God said I was going to have a son. He went and bought baby clothes and fixed up a nursery in his house. That nursery stayed there for maybe two years before that stick turned pink. But whenever he fixed up the nursery, whenever he fixed up the nursery, the baby was already released. Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. That means when she said it, she got pregnant. What you say? God don't need your ovaries. He needs your faith. Oh! There can't be no barrenness in this house. Y'all don't, y'all, you know what? I said there can't be no barrenness in this house. Not in business. Not in healing, not in wholeness, not in marriages. The apostolic grace on this house is proofs. This is opportunity, not opposition. Your prophet will be born in the timing of God. Oh, here's what people do. People think because you're waiting, it ain't happening. What I said, endurance comes before deliverance. My brother went and bought all this, and then he started praying for all the people that couldn't have no children. And so he, God gave him a son. Then two years later, God gave him a daughter when they said he wasn't going to have no children. I believe that in this room tonight, faith is leading us beyond what we have been receiving. We have made God mediocre and kept God on a level when God wants to do something so much bigger, but we have limited him to just being the full gospel believers conference when this place is a ground of miracles and signs and wonders. Why would somebody sitting in the service begin to stretch out their arms? Because it's in here, but mature Christians will treat this like church and not next level dimensions. Are y'all listening to me tonight? Our results, here I go, are different. We are not like the world. They died from this. We got up from this. We are not like the world. They lost everything. We gained everything. Stop fixing your life to be under the auspices of the world and step in the spirit because spirit-filled churches and spirit-filled believers have undeniable proofs. 
My brother been living for 30 years after they said he would be dead. They said this is because cancer kills. Not in my family. Y'all believe until the doctor confirms his cancer. God said, I need you to believe when he confirms. My mama shouted out of her belly in that hospital room. She said, I won't bury my children. I had a lump in my breast and they were doing a biopsy. And I didn't even talk. I didn't even tell my mom nobody. You got to be careful because I didn't want people worrying. I said, God, you're going to show your glory in this. So all the while before the Bible, see, I was went, going everywhere praying for people with lumps. Everywhere. What? Never told them anything. Here, everywhere. Calling them out, calling them out. And watch this. People write me saying the tumor dissolved, the cancer dissolved. They didn't find no cancer. The whole nine yards. Forgot all about what I was dealing with. I was on the table, and they came and asked me, would you give permission for students to come, because this was a teaching, a medical center, to come in and watch this as they were doing the biopsy. And I said, you know what, you said I wouldn't say yes, but I said yes, because I want them to see the miracle of God. Amen. The lump was very obvious. And they were going to be drawing from it. Listen to me. And so they take a big long needle. And when the man got ready to prick my skin with the needle, the lump dissolved right there. He said, did y'all did y'all see that? And the student, he said, did y'all see that? And the student said, wow. And I threw my head up and I said, that's the glory of God. That didn't happen because of y'all. I came in here on a supernatural power. Our results are different. You're supposed to have everything God promised you, but if you have no expectation to support that, it can't come to you because you got to be spiritual for this. This does have a requirement. If we're going to yield to where faith leads, it means if I'm going to produce and sacrifice where faith leads, i got to know where it's leading. I do not know what it is. That means that means something about you. And here's what God told me to tell y'all. Without a positive mentality, you need discipline. I need you to put that there because i got one thing i got to say. You need discipline. You need discipleship. Because God cannot get something to people who are undisciplined in their diligence. Here, watch this. You need discipline in your diligence. Amen. You did run well, but who hindered you? Some people stop running because they're not courageous enough to outlast the trial. I want to tell you right now, you got to outlast this because I told you deliverance comes after endurance, after you have suffered a while. Where are the people that's suffering? Hear me? After you have suffered a while. Hear me, after you have suffered a while. Yes, sir. This light affliction is but for a moment. I need you to hear me. It's just a moment. Amen. It's just a moment. Amen. Do not not prepare for what he promised. Amen. Yes. Now here's, I'm going to give you this final word. If your results are going to be different, this is what you got to do. You got to jump. You got to jump. It can't be calculated. You got to jump. Let me tell you something. I got ready. How many of you ever been swimming before? Had swimming lessons. I never forget. Got a little, my daddy got a little lifeguard and was teaching us how to swim. And we was doing good. And my youngest brother, man, my daddy said, don't go past five feet. Don't let him go past five feet. My brother wanted to get over into the deep water. He was younger. It was shorter, smaller one, give him deep water. And he go, here I am. That daddy said, follow the rules, follow the rules. He said, but Tanya, I know the same mean that's in the shallow water is in the deep water. Yeah. I said, but we, we can't do that. And so one day the, one day the lifeguard said, okay, okay, y'all got all y'all can get on this side. He said, but we're going to prove that the lessons work. Watch this. When we take you over in the deep water where you can't your, your feet can't touch the ground and you're going to need the strength to maintain the float. He said, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get up on the, on the diving board and we're going to jump down and you got to trust that what I gave you yeah. is going to work. Because what they were saying was the same thing that worked in the shallow we're working in deep. But you'll never trust the training 
until you get out of control. So I was like, but my daddy said, she said, I already talked to your daddy. My brother gets up there. He just jumps off. Come all the way back up and come over. I like this about him. He said, come on, Tony, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. I said, but see, see. I'm like, I'm like taller than you. I'm like older than you. I didn't hear daddy say that. And that's what we be doing with God. God is saying, jump. Jump. And so the lifeguard said this. She said, do you know what I am? She said, I'm not just a trainer. I'm a lifeguard. Which means I've been trained for drowners. Not swimmers. I've been trained for drowners. I've been trained to secure and assure you that even if you get in trouble, it won't kill you. I'm not just your trainer. I'm your lifeguard. She said, but the only way this is going to work, you got to jump. God told me to tell some people in this room tonight, the only way the next level is going to happen for you, it ain't going to be laying on the hands. You got to jump. You got to jump into that business. You got to jump into that vision. You got to jump into that school. You got to jump into that community. You got to jump into those streams. And you got to jump, jump, watch this, where everything about you is saying, don't do it. She 